Janice Mars Wunderlich. I grew up in Ohio and I have an undergraduate degree from Brigham Young University and a master's degree from The Ohio State University. I moved to Illinois about eight years ago to take a job at, at Monmouth College in Monmouth, Illinois. And it was here in Monmouth that I um, got to know and love the Art Sisters. They had been working as a collective group long before I came, but when I came, they welcomed me into their group and I've been working with them and we've been supporting each other in a fun, creative community ever since. I grew up in Ohio in a big family and I have very colorful relatives and one of them is um, Edwin George, who is a well-known um, folk artist storyteller and he passed away um, a couple of years ago but I grew up with his stories and in many ways I feel like he still speaks to me every time I'm in the woods and uh, the stories that he told in his art were very complex they spoke about creation and how we got certain things in our lives healing um, healing methods through plants and how the ants assist us and how rabbits and coyotes and dogs, all these different animals assist us and bring us gifts and um, how the Milky Way was created for instance and how the spider uh, helped um, to bring us pottery and all these different wonderful stories that he collected in his art. So I grew up with a really wonderful model of how to tell stories. And the stories that I've chosen to tell are complex stories. I wanna talk about the beauty and the pain of being a nurturer, being a mom. Um, the idea that you lose your identity and you also gain a new identity by caring and nurturing for others. I love to talk about resilience in my art and the fact that um, life brings us so many different waves of emotions, sometimes uh, beautiful happiness and joy and sometimes deep and intense pain and how we have to learn how to ride all of those waves and I think of it as like flowing in a river and how water is an important um, symbol of resilience but it can also be um, deathly if you're drowning in it. It can also be the water in your tears. It can be the water that waters and nurtures your garden. And so I love to take natural things such as water and animals and use them in as sim uh, symbolism to talk about these complex emotions. I teach art history and I love the uh, connection to the ancient world and the stories that the ancient world told through their art. And I love to look at those stories and look at the art and find the connection to the present contemporary day. And I think we're still trying to figure out where we came from and where we're going. And I speak to that in my work. I speak to the universality and also the person, the very individuality of our lives and how complex it is to be human. I think a valuable part of being an art sister is having the ability to ask questions about my art to my fellow sisters and to know that they'll give me good feedback and I think we're all on a journey of making and, and we are all learning about new materials. We're all pushing ourselves. I know for me, I've been doing ceramics a really long time, but I'm pretty new at painting and I know I have a long way to go to improve myself. And I get a lot of really good feedback and I feel like making art uh, within the friendship of my sisters is a very safe place because they encourage me uh, we encourage each other, but we also really are excited when someone learns something new that they can share with the rest of us. And I think building an art community amongst your friends is a great uh, way to go about making art. It's also helpful to help us all keep 
being creative and keep making art because we get together monthly and there's a positive encouragement there. If you don't have anything, um, you're not going to get shamed, but it's, it's sort of expected that we're all going to make and try and push ourselves and, and we really encourage each other in positive ways to keep making art. As a as art professor, I get to make art and, and demonstrate art a lot at school, but it's this is an extra encouragement me, for me to have the art sisters as my friends because um, I get to, I, I make sure that I have something new that I'm doing besides just teaching all the time. So it's good for me. When I was studying art in college, I really gravitated towards art that had serious, lengthy processes. And I found that I didn't like anything that was fast. I liked to spend time and create memories with the art that I was making. And so I naturally moved towards ceramics and printmaking and painting in lots of layers so that I could create a way to tell complex stories that pass over a length of time and I'm especially drawn to working in ceramics, which is what I teach at the college. And I love the material of clay because even as at a molecular level, it is talking about dualities. I love that part of the clay encourages melting and part of the clay resists melting. And so we have this perfect balance, this duality between materials. We have water that's helpful in clay, but it can also be devastating to clay if there's too much water because it will blow up in the kiln. Again, it's all this duality within the material itself. And I find that the language of clay is failure. It will crack if you don't build correctly with it. Um, and that is its language. That's how it tells you it needs something. It needs more water or you put too much water in it is if it cracks or fails. And I feel that working my hands with that material, it really helps me to work through things within myself. And there's so much personality in the, in the material of clay that comes out as I work on the, the, the surface. And I love the surprise that I get every time I open the kiln and I've got glass bits that have melted or oozed in a certain way. Um, I love the colors that are achieved by using inorganic chemistry to create the glazes. I just, I can't get enough of that material. And it's not a fast, easy process. It's slow. I probably fire things in the kiln seven or eight times to get the surfaces that I want, the complex surfaces, but it's so worth it. And it's, it just uh, sort of feeds my soul to be able to uh, work my hands so much and sort of get sweaty, if you will, with the material. I'm, I'm still a beginner with painting. I'm still learning how to uh, do the many processes and layers of painting. But I like to tell, I like to make complicated compositions and I enjoy, I don't mind when I have to go back through and paint over something or redo something. And that's pretty much how I paint is that I will paint um, and it looks bad until I finally think it looks good um, by putting more and more layers on it and more and more detail on it. When someone looks at my art, I hope that they see the details. The story is in the details. Look for the turtles, look for the books. The books represent like time that has passed or memories that have passed and also the potential of the many memories in our future. I love thinking about time as being circular and I like thinking about my ancestors who've come before me and who and the people who are related to me that will come after me and how we create this ongoing uh, web of, of humanity. I love thinking about past cultures and about future cultures. And I love thinking about our daily lives and how each moment is rich with images and they pass, they're fleeting, they come and they go and they fuel us, they feed us. And it's so important that we are always capturing those moments and remembering them and that we can um, 
see the beauty and the struggle in life and be able to enjoy every minute of both.